Hello everyone and welcome back to Shanahan Military. In today's video we're going to cover the progression of British Army helmets during Op Banner. Now Op Banner was the Troubles in Northern Ireland and it dated from August 69 all the way to June 2007 I believe was when the operation was called to a halt. Um, 35 years I believe was uh, Op Banner, it was the longest operation I believe the British Army was involved in. Um, and the equipment drastically changed in that 35 years. So in 1969, the British would have uh, soldiers would have marched into Belfast or into the areas of Northern Ireland wearing this. And this is the Mark IV. And the Mark IV is an upgraded version of the Mark III, obviously, which was initially fielded for the D-Day landings in 1944. There's some slight changes between the uh, Mark IV and the Mark III, whereas they moved the uh, lugs for the, the chin strap on the Mark III, they were higher up, whereas they moved them down on the Mark IV, and they changed the chin strap, and they also changed the lining. But the actual shell itself is basically the same as the Mark III. So as you can see, it provides a bit of a protection for the head, but none for the face or the back of the neck or the, the ears or anything like that in relation to public order rioting or things like that. I have it here with the, the face mask on. Um, or the, the respirator on just to show uh, a representation of what the British soldier would have worn in public order. So this is the Mark IV, this is what they initially went into the off banner with. As you can see there's no face protection whatsoever. So they upgraded it slightly and they came up with this idea. Oh, excuse me. So this is the Mark IV public order or riot helmet and basically it's the same helmet, same chin strap, um, same liner as the Mark IV but as you can see they upgraded it with a, a riot shield and the riot shield served the purpose where it protected the soldier's face but it also left the back of the neck and the ears vulnerable. Um, when the visor is down um, it becomes very front heavy and when the visor is up it becomes very top heavy so not an ideal situation um, this was a stop gap whereas I, I believe it was the Royal Corps of Engineers took the helmets and basically jerry rigged them with the visor on it it's not purposely built for to have a visor fitted to it and if I just take this off one second sorry for the state of the liner but you can actually see the actual fitting system for the helmet is actually it's integrated into the helmet so there's a bracket that runs the whole way through the, the, the harness and holds the visor in place so as I said it made it very top heavy and it, when it when the visor was back and it made it very front heavy when the visor was down so I'm just going to put this one on the ground so they come up with a stopgap solution so this is what they call the Cromwell helmet same thing, they were looking for a, a, a cheap, cheerful way and in a hurry to get public order helmets to the soldiers in the north. So what they did was they jerry-rigged, which is basically a motorbike helmet with a riot shield visor on the front of it. Now, as you can see, it protects the ears and protects the back of the neck to a certain degree. But same thing, when the helmet, the helmet, the chin strap is or the visor is back, it makes it very heavy on the back of the head. And when the visor is down, it, it, it's actually a better fit or a better. It doesn't draw it down as much as as the uh, Mark IV did. Side effect or uh, an initial problem with these is they're not ballistic. So therefore, for blast injuries, for gunshots and stuff like that. The helmet is as much use as a chocolate teapot. Um, so on one side it's good for riots, on the other side it's not very good for ballistic protection. So let's put this down here again. So what they did was at the time they were trying to upgrade helmets as well, they were trying to upgrade all equipment. Um, they had just returned back from the Falklands where they would have had the Mark IV. Um, 
and they found the helmet very lacking. So they initially adopted, they're very rare to come by um, and they're very expensive when you do see them. It's called the Internal Security Northern Ireland Helmet. And what it basically was, was a ballistic helmet that looked like a parachute Mark VI helmet with a visor on the front of it. And it had what looked like a World War II dispatch rider's chin strap. Um, so that was an intern helmet. Um, very, very short lived. The soldiers didn't find it comfortable, especially with this big um, chin strap underneath them. Um, and it also ran into the problem of logistics. The helmets had to be sent away to the engineers to be adapted and upgraded, be it the Mark IV or be it the uh, Cromwell helmet. And the soldiers were handing in their issued helmet for it to be upgraded or fixed with the Mark IV visor, riot visor. And then when they returned from their operations in Northern Ireland, the helmets had to be sent back in and they had to redo the riot visors and take the riot visors off. At the start what they were doing was they were jerry fitting so many helmets and leaving them in stores. So when you went and did your tour you were issued a helmet. When you finished your tour you handed it back. Logistics problem was huge. So then they came up with the Mark 6 helmet. The Mark 6 helmet was uh, it's a nylon helmet. I'll just show you here. It's a nylon helmet. Ballistic helmet. but Nylon ballistic. And the chin strap and the harnessing system was completely upgraded. You have a pad in the front, a pad in the back. And they wanted this system to be more modular, that it could be adapted for certain situations, whereas the soldier still has the same helmet, it's quick to fix and it's quick to turn into a public order helmet. So then they come up with this item. So this is a full Mark VI helmet, done in its public order, riot capability. So I'm just taking the protective cover off the visor, obviously to stop the visor from getting scratched and stuff. Now you will see these with and without the helmet covers. Some regiments wore the helmet covers, some regiments didn't wear the helmet covers. A lot of the regiments that were mainly dealing with public order in the likes of Belfast, Derry, uh, the big built up areas would take the ch their helmet covers off for the simple reason they, they would catch fire if they got petrol bond. And so that's why they would not wear, you would see them not wearing their helmet covers. So the helmet, the visor itself literally just, there's an, an adapter that screws into the side of the helmet and the visor can be taken on by just turning that or put, taken off by just turning the keys on either side and the visor will pop off. Now, on the visor I'll just show you here, it has a rib along the glass to stop items actually coming down underneath them in between the helmet and the visor which was a very good upgrade as well. The helmet itself is a three point harness so it obviously makes it more comfortable on the wearer's head but it also came with what's called a nib guard and that's to protect the neck and it's um, that's hard hard nylon with a wire woven underneath it that the soldier could shape it to whatever way he wanted it. Also detachable. So this was what they eventually ended up with in 2007 when Operation Banner was ceased to exist and the troops were pulled out of uh, Northern Ireland to a certain degree. So we went from the Mark IV to the Mark VI. So there is your progression of um, riot helmets or public order helmets from Operation Banner. If you liked what we provide here at Shanahan Militaria and you liked the video, please like, please subscribe, please hit the notification button, please leave a comment also if you wish to do so. Thank you.